Well, welcome viewers to the High Tech Oil Super Series. It's round number two and we're coming to you from Darwin, Northern Territory. We're at Hidden Valley Raceway, less than 15 minutes out of the city centre right here. And of course, we've got the TO2 muscle cars about to make their way on track. As we have a look down, they are in the form up grid and they're about to start their cars up and get the rumble underway. Of course, it is the driver A race that's going to kick things off. 12 laps. We've seen some exciting racings already earlier in the day. Our B drivers have been out. Of course, we've got the endurance coming your way later. There's $20,000 on the line in the Kings of the North battle that's happening this weekend for round number two so that is headlining the high tech oil super series Stephen white joining me here steve great to be here in Darwin, northern territory and what an exciting race we've got coming up just amazing to be here at the northern territory we've been welcomed so kindly and and fondly by the territory folk uh, but how amazing you've got 20 ta2 cars there ready to do battle looking forward to the king of the north uh, race later on today enduro first time in the world that they're doing a two driver event so uh, fantastic high tech all super series and uh, yeah we just can't wait for a fantastic afternoon of racing it's not just the TOT muscle cars framed by high tech steel frame. We've also got the combined sedans, the NT Hyundai Excels, and of course the HQ Cup, which is still underway. The Founders Cup, and we've still got one more race to come in that. Yeah, absolutely. Founders Cup for HQ Holdens. The Crocodile Cup was run yesterday, a long distance event, very similar to the TA2 event, and the, and the Hyundai Excels for the Northern Territory. Uh, the Territory 250, that one, and combined sedans, which is a local category that the uh, North Australian Motorsports Club have put on for us. So fantastic, along with drifting and a bit of everything else. What a fantastic event it's been. So far and it continues to be. And how's it going to go the first time TO2 have ever seen a two-driver event? We saw it yesterday, 24 laps, but this afternoon, our final race of the day, 35 laps for them to go in this blistering heat. Well, uh, a couple of them talking to you today that uh, they're very keen to put their other driver in first and not worry about talking to him until very late in the evening, so well, very late in the event. So, uh, yeah, pretty challenging with the heat. Some of them got cool suits, some of them haven't. And obviously, they're, they're combining that with trying to do a driver change, seamless driver change. Uh, we have some solo drivers in there that'll do a wheel change. So it'll be pretty exciting in pit lane this afternoon. It's going to be great. Got our safety car out there doing a lap as they form up here, but it says everything in the name. TO2 muscle car framed by high tech steel framing. And hasn't it been an event for weekend? Jamie McCarthy, because we've seen so much unfold. This is race number five that we're about to get underway with today. It's our main drivers, our A drivers you can see up there. And this is the starting grid for this. Nathan Hearn starting out of number one, who's come back from the United States, a young gun from Australia. Josh Haynes for second, Dylan Thomas in, Eden Thornborough, Jackson Rice, Hayden Jackson, Russell Right, Mark Crutcher, Hugh McAllister, and Michael Porter rounding out the top ten. Lee Stibbs, who starts the weekend as the championship leader out of grid position 11, with the 12 of uh, Zach Lescalpo uh, there out of 12, back to Christopher Formosa, who's had a pretty solid weekend in the number 49 challenger. Matt McKeldin, Brad Gartner, Mike Rowell, Aaron Tebb, Hayden Kuhn, Adam Hargraves, and Andrew Fisher for a 20 car lineup for the fifth race of the weekend, and our A category drivers. Well, let's get this race underway, though. It's going to be Josh Haynes, our PWR Pole Award winner this weekend, alongside Nathan Hearn, the young gun out of Australia, now racing in America, brought back for this race here at Hidden Valley Raceway in Darwin. This one has been spectacular. We've already seen him on the front row. Turn number one, big opportunity for him to dive down on the brakes. Nathan Hearn on the inside, and we're underway. Look at that. Cool. He's already moved out. The crutcher car of number four on the outside, and now they're going almost five wide in the background. It's a great start to this race. These two have been going at it together all weekend they've been shaking hags they've been hugging after the battles that they've been having and this time it is nathan hearn out in front josh haynes has got ahead of him a couple of times throughout the weekend but that battle is going to be special to watch over the next 12 laps as the rest of the field sorting themselves out as they head over the back side of the circuit for lap one of 12 here at hidden valley raceway rusty right in there in the uh rob at number 40 he's had a solid start there as well as we go down and look through the field that is the four of mark Crutcher, just an inside line there, maybe a little bit defensive in the early laps, trying to maintain position as we get sorted out here on the first lap. Yes, yeah, you can see Lachalpo now moving up in the 21 car as well, but Hearn got that little lead over the top of Josh Haynes. Now, they will battle it out as we go on. Crutch has now moved back a couple of positions to that number four car, but fighting to hold on to that. Looks like Lachalpo straight behind him. Interestingly enough, up the front, though, we're seeing that Jackson Rice car again. They've all maintained Dylan Thomas, who has been incredibly consistent throughout the weekend with Tim Brooks as well. So they're just accumulating more and more points, and it's what you need to do, not just for their championship run, but also for the Kings of the North battle of the 35 laps that's coming on later on today. As here we go down the main straight and Dylan Thomas has to just move over and just looks like he's going to come from an IES car there as well to make sure he can't get the move done under brakes. It's a big left hand into turn one. In the background you see a couple of cars go too wide. 
Oh, big slide there for the 81 of Hayden Jackson. That was Eden Thornbury trying to get down the inside, but it didn't work. Nathan Hearns just got a big handful of opposite lock out in front. That's the battle I'm looking forward to. Hearn versus Josh Haynes. They've really gone toe to toe throughout the weekend so far, and we are really looking forward to another battle here. But you talk about Dylan Thomas and Tim Brook with their consistency. They've had that consistency with just clean, outright speed. They have not been out of the top three in any of the races so far this weekend. We'll wait and see because it looks like Ian Thornborough in the number four position. He's being held up a little bit at the moment by Dylan Thomas, and Thomas doing everything he can to cover him off. Jackson Rice just waiting for that moment in the back, and they've already had to replace the front of that car. Of course, it's all just carbon fibre. It's not a huge deal, but they're not going to be wanting to scratch that car too much coming into the endurance. There was a fair amount of steel structure getting replaced in the front of that car with the, the, the sacrificial almost front clips on those cars. And uh, we have gone through a few of them this weekend with the TA2 class. Josh Payne is trying hard. The back of the car skating around under brakes. A little bit of mid-corner understeer, which that translated into oversteer off. So he is trying hard there to try and stay with Nathan Hearn, who, uh, as we knew going into this weekend, was going to be certainly the class of the field. With his experience in America and a couple of championships here in, in Australia, he is without a doubt one of the best. But uh, Haynes is working him over big time. Yeah, we just saw Hearn there. He's made a couple of little errors on the car, sliding around. Look at the Josh Haynes going to take every opportunity. What a confidence boost for this young man. Gets the PWR Pole Award over this guy. And not only that, he's a bit of an idol already because he's gone to America. It's, it's the steps that Josh Haynes wants to take. And now he's battling with him here at Hidden Valley. He's had a win over him. Now he's following him again. He knows he's got the same pace. So great confidence from him. And we'll see when he's going to take his opportunity. And if he can just get a little bit closer as Hearn just pulls onto the main straight. He's done really well coming out of that final corner. I'm just looking at Dylan Thomas in the background because look right behind him. Thornborough and Rice are waiting for their opportunity. Yeah, two of the young guns and they will be a force here and again it is Thomas in that third position that race car has not been out of the top three all through the weekend and that's why they are leading the combined points team with Tim Brook and there's Thornborough trying very very hard in that number 51 Camaro both of those cars have been in the wars so far this weekend as well and in behind them is Jackson Rice that's got a brand new front clip on that car after that so uh, what we saw the effort between him and Jordan Cox in race number four with the B driver combination here is Eden Thornborough. He's been fast all weekend, but hasn't had an awful lot of luck going with the number 51 tomorrow. No, we have seen a little bit of contact. Everyone being so keen in that first corner on the first lap to try and get that position and try and maintain that dominance. And so we've seen a lot of contact between the cars. It looks like in this race they've calmed down a little bit. 35 laps still to go this afternoon. They're not going to want to damage any of the cars. Their safety car looks like it's already about to come on track. So we'll wait to find out what is going on there. That might change things up a little bit. Ah, uh, that's the reason why. Oh, is that Hayden Jackson? That is Hayden Jackson in the Rosebrook number 81 Challenger. And that'll be coming out of turns 10 and 11 there in the gravel trap, so they'll have to tow that car out of there. It is an exciting spot to watch, and it doesn't matter what circuit racing we have here at Hidden Valley, that is the corner where people do come unstuck. And but we are back underway with racing here at the High Tech Oil Super Series. TA2 and Dylan Thomas, they're having to cover off as they head down to turn number one in that position three. Doesn't look like Josh Haynes can get the... Oh, look at this, Thornborough Thorn on the Burrow's inside. Thornborough's got overlap, he's got overlap, and a nice clean pass down the inside. Thomas, can he live to the outside off the exit? Hearn got a fantastic fantastic restart as the seven of rice is trying to get some momentum and go forward as well there is mark crutcher going through in that beautiful yellow number four hearn leading off the restart that was a pretty quick extraction i've got to say well done to the team here at uh, hidden valley yeah they didn't muck around we want to get back underway racing with the ta2 muscle cars framed by high tech steel framing and here we go we check this out the coulter car who's done fantastic this weekend just getting through the motions make sure they don't make too many errors had a very good pit stop yesterday, I suppose, between two safety cars. Probably didn't seem like it was going to be a good pit stop at the time, but it worked out very well for them to see him in the mid-pack at the moment. Michael Coulter behind the wheel this time. Nathan Hearn still out in front. Josh Haynes behind in Thornborough. Now into that third position. And look at the attitude of the car as he moves it around. Now, Jackson Rice, he knows Dylan Thomas is not going to make this easy for him. You can see the number seven. He's going to be looking for any moment that he can take advantage of an error. Well, after race three of the weekend, Thomas was the new championship point leader ahead of the seven of Jackson Rice and there was only 11 points between them so this 
is crucial, very, very crucial with the result here. And they'll all be thinking about the big 35 lap King of the North race coming up later on in the day too. So man, there is a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes here at the moment and on track with what do we do? Points, do we think about points? Do we go for the win? Hard one to pick. Fastest lap of the race has been an 11.4 by Nathan Hearn and we saw the cars down in the 10 fives in race number one. So that's telling me at the moment off that restart, the track is definitely a little bit hotter than uh, earlier on today. Yeah, Josh Haynes only a couple of hundreds behind behind him too in lap time, so they are very evenly matched out in front at the moment and starting to lead away from the rest of the back, Eden Thornborough now in third, Dylan Thomas has backed off a little bit, Jackson Rice waiting for his moment, he needs to get a pass done because with that stoppage we had earlier we're going to have to wait and see whether we will have anything go out of this race or whether we will complete the full 12 laps. You see the move around, they slide onto the main straight coming out of turn 14, it's not really wide there, it looks a lot wider when you're watching it at home but they managed to pull the cars up and here we go, Dylan Thomas with a nice run, he's not going to get Eden Thornborough, that is out of the question at the moment, but Jackson Rice in the background, we see Mark Crutcher pulling to the inside in the yellow number four. Just looking for a little bit of clean air, maybe trying to cool the engine temperatures down. The 21, uh, Zach Lachelpo, he's doing an awesome job. He is running in the sixth position at the moment, ahead of the 66 of Lee Stitch, who was the championship leader going into the round here at Hidden Valley. And uh, he's had a little bit of an ordinary weekend. Lachelpo's got some damage to the right front corner of the number 21 machine. There is the Aero Financial Services, number 66 of Lee Stitch. He's had a really challenging weekend. Well, it is a Tepper Solutions 21 too, so the air conditioning specialist out of New South Wales are uh, trying to keep cool this weekend, but he's up six positions at the moment. That is an incredible start for him. Well, these two are single car drivers too, so they have got to look forward or not look forward to 35 laps at the end of today. So that's the first of our single car combinations who made the decision to not do the double driver combo. Fastest lap of the race, Haynes goes fastest now at a 1.11.01, but the gap is just on half a second. Hearn still your race leader with just three laps left to go here at Hidden Valley for the TA2 Muscle Car Series, framed by High Tech. Yeah, Lee Stimps has a look down the inside of Lachau, by see if he can get that sixth place back, but he's not going to make it. Maybe just getting a bit of fresh air in the front of the car. We're now on lap 10 of 12, so they'll be starting to heat up. They are pushing hard out here at Hidden Valley Raceway. So they go around for the tyre smoke in the background there as we start to head up there towards our front runners. And wow, I wonder what's happened there. If you look at Haynes now, putting the pressure on again on Hearn. Just up ahead, there was a big cloud of tyre smoke. I wonder if Hearn ahead of that group had actually locked a break going into turn number five. And that's seen that gap close. It was out to half a second. It is way less than that right now with Haynes within a car link and hunting down the race leader with just over two and a half odd laps left to go here. This is going to be a run to the chequered flag between these two young guns. Both carrying a bit of race tape on the cars as well. We've seen them go through a little bit of damage. They head onto the main straight. Hayne making a gain. That was definitely a better exit off. This is going to put some pressure on Hearn as they rocket down this 1.1 kilometre long front straight at Hidden Valley. They thunder down towards turn number one. Haynes with a fake to the inside, back to the outside. Didn't quite have the momentum at the end, but he is working over Hearn's mirrors big time. It is going to come down to a couple of mind games and can they keep their cool in the heat with only a couple of laps left in this race? Can Haynes get the advantage in the mind games between these two? Hearn's got a lot more experience in the United States. He's had to cover him up and look at him slide the car into turn number five. Haynes, can he take advantage of this on the exit? He's got the outside run. He's not going to get alongside him and Hearn's going to cover him up once again in the number 10. Haynes looks to be a little bit better in the slow to mid speed stuff and Hearn, they actually got the rears locked up and then it pitched it into under Steer, so that car's not where he really wants it to be right now. And it is susceptible with Haynes on the hunt. Just over a lap left to go. It is still Thornborough in third, Thomas in fourth, Rice in fifth, and Lachalpo in the top six positions. We'll see as they come onto the main straight. And Josh Haynes set him up for a nice run here coming out of turn 14. They stay on the bitumen as well. They don't grab any dirt on the exit in the background. Looks like all three drivers are clean. Our top five battling it out. But here it is. The fight for the lead at the moment on the final lap. One more to go. Haynes comes to the inside again. A fake turn covers off. I love the lick of flame as they go down the gears here in the big VA power TA2 muscle cars. Haynes sideways through the centre of the corner. He covered. He was very narrow on the approach and it's actually sucked a little bit of exit speed. But Haynes
Hayden hasn't actually been able to take an advantage right here, right now. This is where Hayden seems to be a little bit better. A rear braking issue, maybe just too much rear brake for the number 10 challenger, and Hayden closes right back up. Goes to the outside as Hearn covers up into turn number six. Can he get a better run out of the final corner? This is the sequence he needs to make count to try and get a run on Hearn down to the chequered flag. This is going to be close. Yeah, very hard to overtake through this back section of Hidden Valley. We'll wait and see as they go through turns 10, 11, 12 and 13. He's within half a car length. He's trying to get that slingshot. He's all over the back of Hearn. That gap is closed. Can he get the better run? Hearn trying to hold on for victory here at Hidden Valley. Can Haynes get the run? It's going to be close. I think Hearn's got enough to be able to do it. They're not going to go side by side. It will be Nathan Hearn with the win. Closely followed by Haynes. Third. Eden Thornborough will come through in third position. Yeah, Dylan Thomas in fourth. Jackson. Schaupo, what a great move from him. Up six places now in the sixth position. Then it's Lee Stips who ends up in seventh position. Another one who's moved up the field a number of positions. Russell Bright, Brad Gardner comes through in ninth. Tenth is Michael Coulter. Then it's Mark Rutcher. They had a great little battle going on for that tenth position. Down the back there a little bit. In twelfth, of course, it's going to be Andrew Fisher. Then it's going to be the Teb, McAllister, Hume, Hargraves, McKeldon, Rao, Formosa, and, of course, Hayden Jackson towed off the track a little bit earlier out of that gravel trap. Well, I reckon Nathan Hearn's just going to be... Ooh, that was uh, probably a little bit closer than I really needed in that one. A little bit of tuning may be required for that car over 35 laps because it certainly wasn't happy in the, the, the mid sort of speed sections over the back of the circuit. He got a good enough run on the straight to be able to cover, but where you sitting couldn't make the, the, the advantages where Haynes was better than, uh, he was still able to do it. So that was a, a fantastic race and congratulations to Nathan Hearn. It's going to be a big difference when I think we come to the Enduro because the co-drivers are going to play a big part in that as well. Let's have a look at our official results now for the TO2 muscle cars framed by high tech still. Of course we are in race number five. The, uh, race number five it is for the TO2 muscle cars. Nathan Hearn does get the win. Josh Haynes in second, Eden Thornborough rounds out your top three. Then it's Thomas, Rice, Lashaupo, Stibbs, Wright, Gardner and Coulter round out your top ten. Fantastic effort for Michael Coulter. Mark Crutcher in the 11th position, followed by Andrew Fisher. That was a good result because Andrew's had some issues with the number 50 machine. Aaron Tebb, Hugh McAllister, Hayden Hume, Aidan Hargraves, Adam Hargraves in the 16th position, followed by Matt McKeldon, Mike Growl, Christopher Formosa and Hayden Jackson, obviously with that off further down the order in the number 81 machine. Well, it's going to be interesting to see who finishes our big race here, our Enduro, for the $20,000 King of the North here this afternoon. In the meantime, we're going to have a short break here and be back in just a moment. And there was that contact initially, so a five second penalty first for Jordan Cox for not doing the start correctly. He was actually out of line, out of his start box effectively. 15 seconds for that contact with Tyler Everingham. And then that little spot of post-race contact we saw after the end of race number four with Everingham into the back of Cox, that was a 15 second penalty for Tyler Everingham. But this is, this is all on, like for the points for the round. So this is, it's overall points across all six races that will give us the winner for the TA2 King of the North and $20,000. Here is the grid lineup. It is the Thomas Brook combination starting off the pole. The Colters, what a fantastic effort from them with a second place finish here yesterday to put them out of P2. Gartner and Vidot out of position three. Formosa and Filippetto go back to Leonard and Wright. McAllister, Mediki, Rice, Everingham, Jackson Hughes from grid position eight. Zach Loshelfo uh, out of grid position nine, a single driver, and Haynes and Bates out of 10. Then we go into position number 11, Hume and Hackwood will be there. 12th is Chenny and Thornborough, who's been very quick. Herner Manuel in the 13th, Michael Rowell on a solo in 14th. Lee Stibbs on his own in 15th, of course. That's another tough one. What I like there is we see Herner Manuel going to be coming out of 13th, Josh Haynes and Nick Bates out of 10. Now, we, we saw what they did up the front in their solo races. If we can get them in the car in the final stint, that will be absolutely amazing to see how they fight it out. 
We're getting ready to go racing here. This is it. We're, we're creating history here this weekend in Darwin. The first ever TA2 Endurance paired driver race in history anywhere in the world. We are about to go green for 35 laps here at Hidden Valley Raceway. The TA2 Muscle Car Series framed by High Tech, the king of the north. And this is about to explode. Will it be a race of attrition? Who will get to the end and win the $20,000 at the moment? It is the 68 team that is in the box seat as we go green here at Hidden Valley. Yeah, Lee, you see Tim Brook now. He's on the inside line, but following Gartner as well on the 22 gets to the inside of Walker. And they get through turn number one. They're two cars side by side. Oh, three cars. That made it for Keldon on the outside there. And he's in the... Kubota car there, they'll be trying to try and claw back some position. This is, oh no! McRowell, McRowell was just off track, so he just got guided off there, off turn number one. So let's get through this first lap. Tim Brooks, certainly one of the quicker guys out there. That combination between him and Dylan Thomas has been very, very competitive out of the weekend. They are the points leaders for the King of the North title at the moment. So, you know, they need to finish up top. There was a little bit of congestion outside of the top four there, and you can see them backing up. That's, uh, the Leonard Wright Mustang was sort of in there. Someone got a bad run through turn number six, and look at the gap it's created behind the top four cars. With that fourth position car, the number 49 of Nicholas Filippino, you know, he's paired with Chris Famosa for the weekend. I think it was Temps in the background just giving off the white car as well. So, wait and see though, Filippetto and of course, uh, Chris there doing a fantastic job this weekend in the number 49 and they managed to get themselves the fourth position in the endurance yesterday. Chris Formosa doing a fantastic job and he'll be coming in the latest and he's much more comfortable on a degraded tyre as well. So have a big run down here in the turn number one. Uh, looks like Tim Brook is going to hold on over Brad Gardner but there's plenty of action in the background still happening that turn number one is uh, a very exciting part of the racing here with the TA2 muscle cars. Well, Brad Gartner hasn't had the best of weekends. He uh, got turned around in his previous race as well, which was put down to a racing incident. So they'll be trying to salvage something out of this. Remembering the, the results of this race, how they cross the line is not one, two and three for that King of the North title in the $20,000. It is over all six races and both driver combinations. So this is the car to watch right now. They do have a lead, 284 with the number seven Jackson Rice Ford Mustang second on 245. And then uh, like Nathan Hearn and uh, the Castor car back in the uh, 235 mark. So it, it's pretty competitive, but you've got to give the advantage to the number 68 team right now. And they're pretty comfortable out in front, but boy, we have a long, long way to go, Matt. 35 laps for the TO2 muscle car. They're quick around here at Hidden Valley Race. Well, we've seen them in the 109s already. Will they go any faster on a fresh set of tyres? I'm sure they've got green rubber on for this final race with 35 laps. We're only on the start of lap number three. And look at that, Tim Brook doing a nice job out of running. He's very, very quick. He's aggressive on the car. I think you need to be with these cars as well. Brad Gartner just settled down behind him. And I love seeing him. He called out that McRowell. Nick Rowloff, he was towards the rear of the field, but definitely an off there. See if he can get back on. He's down in the heavy grass, but just trying to get, he should be able to get back out on track. So that's down at turn number one as Brooke continues to lead. Now, the other factor we've got to take into the equation here, Matt, is this is probably the heaviest these cars have ever run on fuel. To get them home to 35 laps, there is no fuel stop. These cars will be weighing a lot more than they usually do with their fuel loads. So these starting drivers will have to manage that with the tyre situation as well. Something to think about. I'm sure the teams have thought about it. Well, they'll definitely be thinking about that right now. Brad Gardner looks like he's just trying to find some clean air to try and keep the temperatures in the car down. Sometimes it's not about leading the race, going into the driver change. We'll check out one of our high tech boards replays here. Mark Rutcher on the inside. The number 50 car, Andrew Fisher there, driving that solid this weekend after Paul Hadley's had it. But here we go, Mike Rowe in the background, the 15. Looks like he's just done that on his own accord, a bit too fast. Maybe missed his braking markers coming into turn one. Well, he has raced sprint cars, so he was turning the right direction with a little bit of stagger going on as uh, this race continues. But he managed to get back on track. It did not bring out a safety car. That's the important thing here as we count the laps down for 35 and this race continues here at Hidden Valley. Brook is your race leader in the CXC number 68 Mustang, chased by Brad Gartner in the 22 Mustangs 1 and 2. 
How about third? The Colter, Colter, father and son combination are third on track, and it's Steve, the father, who is holding that third position. He's doing an amazing job out there right now. What a story from them too. They've raced against each other for so many years. In, in trucks. trucks. Yeah, in various sorts, uh, forms of motorsport, but finally joining up together to come to the Darwin Northern Territory. There's two driver combination this weekend, and good to see Steve out leading this race. I'm sure he's not going to go too fast past that, past that 15 lap pit window. They'll get him in as early as they can, but look at this. The fight is on the number 40 at the moment, and that's Russell Wright behind the wheel. Needs to watch out of the background as Tyler Everingham, who's been super quick, Team Double Jackson Rice again gets the dive down the inside, and now he's got Steve Fulker in his sights. Yeah, Everingham's picked up a couple of spots on that last lap, so he is definitely on the move here at the moment. But uh, the number 40 team also doing a very, very good job. Russell Wright, former series champion. Little brake lock up there from the seven Petters Mustang. Russell Wright, a former series champion, a uh, very well-known offshore powerboat racer back in the day as well. So he's uh, managed to get it done and be very, very competitive on both tar seal and water. Uh, Tyler Erring is going to be, have to be very careful that we're seeing a lot of brake lock up from him. And that's going to hurt Jackson Rice when he has to get in that car a little bit later. You're going to have to try and conserve those guys. He cannot continue to do that. He's going to find that nice balance in this car. I'm sure he will. Unfortunately, dropping back Nick Filippetto. We just saw him go up in the dirt in the background previously on this lap. So he's managed to maintain his position, though. It's great for them in position number six at the moment. And like the Colders, that is a very, very good effort first up. To have that grid start for a start, now he's going to come under pressure from uh, Zach Lachalpo uh, in the number 21 machine. Then you've got the McAllister Medecki combination in six. Jackson Hughes. Here's another pass from the seven down the inside of Steve Coulter, who gives him more enough racing room but I tell you what Colt has got some good mid corner speed even on the outside line through turn number one I think Steve Colt is not going to hold up Tyler Everingham too much he won't want to cause any race incident out there they want to try and bring this car home because we've still got the driver change to do we've seen some pit lane penalties before they've got to come in they've got to stop stationary for 90 seconds to a driver change there's a lot going on in pit lane a little bit later on where We've seen penalties issued before, so just keep the car clean, get your second driver in and try and get all the way to the 35 laps. Uh, yesterday we thought there was going to be a, a lot more elbows out at the start of this race, but it's great to see so much clean racing at the moment in this 35 laps. Of course, we are only on lap number six. Well, you've got to have a little bit of common sense in this. The common sense in the early stages of this race. You cannot win this race in the first segment of the race, all right? So these guys have got to get the car home to those that are going to get in the car, and, and most of them are the gun drivers in that case. But uh, certainly the Everingham Rice number seven is on the move. Still the Thomas Brook Mustang leading 68. Gartner Vidot in second with Brad Gartner behind the wheel. Then we go back to that car just going through shot the seven. Rice Everingham Ford Mustang. Lachalpo well, now trying to get down the inside of Filippetto. He, oh, he's got the nose in there. He's not quite over. Filippetto might get a bit of a run out here. No, he just Ran gets wide, wide off out. the exit. Ran wide off the exit. Got a lot of the dirt off and grass off the exit. So that's given the 21 the spot. That's pretty spirited in there at the moment. And then you've got the 81. And starting the race is Jared Hughes, former Toyota 86 Rookie of the Year. And has Jared? Young Jared done an outstanding job this weekend in that car. He definitely has. He's got a big smile on his face when you get it in the pits and really getting his head around the TA2 muscle cars and the amount of power they put out. That's what most of our 86 drivers keep saying just to the in the field today. It's just how much horsepower these cars make. That's been the massive difference stepping out of the 86. Follow on with Steve Coulter now, who's in the fourth position. He's looking for right, right behind him. They're coming around. He's not going to be close enough, I don't think, to get alongside him and take advantage of the draft. Does Andrew Fisher in the number 50 IES car have anything to do with that? And it has brought the yellow flags out here. This 35 lap endurance. Well, we just need to make sure they get through. And he's picking up a whole heap of grass in the front of that car, and that could bring an unscheduled pit stop as well for him. So that might really hurt the team with Nathan Hearn here this weekend, waiting in the car. Lap 15 is the scheduled pit stop minimum amount of laps they need to do. And we're only at lap 9 at the moment, so they're not going to be able to take their CPS unless Paul can possibly shake off all of that grass out of the grill. But we haven't really seen that that weekend. Once it's in there, it's in there. And with the engine temperatures starting to go up with that restriction in the air intakes, most of the cars that we've seen this weekend have had to come into the pits, get that blown off, get it cleaned up. 
So to, to not have those engine oil levels and that go through the roof with that much debris in the front. So a little bit of a game changer here at the moment. We also off camera saw uh, Lee Stibbs pit. He pitted on lap number seven with an issue. That may have been a similar thing where they had to clean the front of the car out. And there's a few of these cars already carrying a little bit of uh, panel damage. There's been a fair few rolls of race tape uh, being used this weekend. The final race here for the TA2 Muscle Cars, framed by High Tech Steel Frame. It is the big endurance, 35 laps. And at the end of this, we will crown the King of the North and $20,000 prize money. Of course, accumulation of all the points this weekend. We've had four sprint races and endurance yesterday afternoon, 24 laps. We step it up. We add another 11 laps to this, this weekend. The lap window, though, for the compulsory pit stop 15. They're not there yet, but we're underway with racing once again. And of course, take off Tim Brooks still leading this in the CXC Mustang as they head into turn number one. Brad Gardner behind him, but look as they go two and three wide in the background. I hope you look to see the big time coming down. LaShelf over the 21 go right behind him. Jared Hughes, but they're off. Filippetto's going off. Colt has gone off, and that is the Hugh McAllister number six. I wasn't going to say it, I was not going to say it, but uh, safety cars breed safety cars. And with that congestion off the race start, they were going three wide down into one and uh, she was all on for the sheep stations in this early stages of the race and exit stage right for a few of these cars. Should not bring out the safety car, but certainly a huge delay for the 49 and the 6s. They still try to get back on track. No signs of the safety cars at the moment. Certainly the yellow's waving down. I think the McAllister South car has actually pulled onto the drag strip. That might be the end of their race. Oh no, the Coulters are slowing down through turn number three as well. And we've got smoke. The car looks like the left-hand side of the car is low and dipped down. So there might be some damage on that car. We'll check out the high-tech oil replay here as they come in. Oh, Filippetto gets a little bit loose, makes contact with Hugh McAllister, and Coulter's got nowhere to go. Yeah, I'd say the damage to the Coulter car is the left front. That was pretty heavy contact, so unfortunately for Filippetto, he's got down, locked the rears, and it speared him across into McAllister, and Coulter, unfortunately, was just a, a, an innocent victim in that deal. See the damage on the front left of that car, and here we go. Wow, yeah, tire rim. There's probably some steering arms there that might have snapped as well. When it's not going around, that's a bad thing, yeah, yeah typically. I'm guessing so. They're going to limp that back home, and that undoes what has been a fantastic weekend for that family team. Sorry, guys, even I feel sorry for you, but hey, that's motor racing. There are a couple out in this one as we are in lap 12 to 35, and that compulsory pit stop window is not too far away from opening as the leader goes by the limping Cabelco number 11. So three laps to go before that compulsory pit stop window opens. Do you go early with your driver? Do you leave him in late? Do you wish on another safety car to get them back in? Because ideally with a safety car on the compulsory pit stop, you're going to lose less time than doing a pit stop on a green flag where you will go down a lap. And the race came to them yesterday with those pit stops and the safety cars we had. So we'll wait and see. In the background, though, Tyler Evering and what a job he's been doing. Now moved himself up into third position and putting that car in a great spot for Jackson Rice to take over when they do do the driver swap. Brad Gardner in the 22 closing up now on Tim Brooks. That safety car has not helped them out with the lead for Tim Brooks. They had a, a nice opening. It was a few seconds apart from the rest of the field. Brad Gardner only behind him. Probably an advantage going into the driver change. Now we've closed that right up and the pressure is on. A lot of grass now across the track. We can see it accumulating on the front grills of these cars. Hopefully that will not restrict the airflow too much because we have seen that the engine temperatures have been quite high around here. Just due to the temperatures in general here in Darwin during this time of the year, we've had a hot weekend. And I tell you what, it's the start of May here, and the safety car has been deployed out onto our track as well. So we'll find out what that is for, ladies and gentlemen. The flags are out, the safety car on track. I'm going to suggest it's probably for the 11, may not have been able to get around that last sequence of corners. And there it is, it's stopped on the racetrack. The leader's just going by now, so another safety car. And we are, behind, we are before the compulsory pit stop window, even still now. So these teams will be modifying strategies on the runs here right now because they, they can't take their compulsory pit stop. Well, the difference between this one is going to be they've sent out a tow car, but I think that's going to be a tilt trade job because if it cannot drive back, you're not going to be able to drag that car around, which means deploying the tilt tray is going to take a lot more time than we see from a, just a general tow off the track. 
could see a couple of cars come out of this. So we'll wait and find out exactly what's going to happen. Our safety car out on track. We're going to take a short break and be back with all the action of the TO2 muscle cars from Darwin Northern Territory. Back to the TOT Muscle Cars, part of the High Tech All Super Series Round 2 here at Hidden Valley Raceway, and we're just seeing an earlier incident that happened on track. Filippetto tried to get down there into turn number one on the restart, unfortunately locked up under brakes, a couple of cars made contact, and Steve Coulter, the biggest loser out of this one, and the damage on the front left of the Cabelco. Chevrolet Camaro, the front wheel not turning. That car has come to a stop out there on the back of the track in turn number 13, and we have sent recovery out. We are now under safety car conditions, and look at this, the tilt tray trying to retrieve this vehicle. As we're about to go back racing here, those that haven't pitted, if they do their, lap, if they do their compulsory pit stop under green, they're going to be compromised if we don't get another safety car. Well, it's risk versus reward, isn't it? As Tim Brook leads away now, Nathan Hearn back in that car, but he's a lap behind. So we'll wait and see how that one goes. I'm going to come out to second position there. Yeah, they're, gonna... down, they're down in 15th. They'll definitely be down a lap. Already a dive down the inside, and you'll go back and get back on the lead lap. So he's not going to muck around, Nathan Hearn. Very experienced race. He might be young, but he's over in America. He's had to deal with all the mind games over there. He's proven to them what a talent he is, and now he's back here racing at Hidden Valley Raceway. As you see, some cars in the background just getting out on the grass once again. The doors open on the number 20 Hargraves Gillison Camaro, and that, that car's got more race tape on it than the 3M factory. Well, all right, let's just get things settled down here. And I'm not going to say safety cars breed safety cars again. I didn't say it the first time. That was post the safety car. Oh, we've got Tev off in the 93. He's only just come out of the pits from his compulsory pit stop. So he was one of the single car entries that took the stop. There's only three cars that I can figure out did not take their compulsory pit stop on that lap 15 window opening. The majority of the field certainly did. As we keep an eye on the number 68, Mustang, that is your race leader. Look at the amount of bodywork on the Hargraves car now flapping around on the front. Now, race control will be looking at that. If it becomes a dangerous object or starts to fly apart, they may get pulled in. They'll have to race take that one as well. That's not going to last very long at 250 plus kilometres an hour here on a 1.1 kilometre long main straight here at uh, Hidden Valley Raceway. So, a lot of damage on that race car. They've certainly been in the wars right throughout the weekend. They've been chasing electrical issues. They finally got it cured and it was a fuel injector issue. They've ch completely changed the entire electrical system and that car looks like it has been to war. Currently second on track at the moment. So, one of only three cars that has not pitted. There's your leader. There's second and in third it's the 21 of Zach Lachelpo. He's done a really good job, very, very good job. But if you have a look through the left-handers, you've got the, the door swinging, the driver's door swinging open on the 20 as well, so that's probably not ideal. Not that there's much of a door on these cars. They may be forced to come in to take that pit stop very shortly because they're going to have to tape down the front of the car and that door issue is going to have to be fixed. And I'll wait to see what race control have to say about they it. They will not be able to do the repair while they are doing the compulsory pit stop and the driver change. After the 90 seconds, then they can make repairs. So they'll be thinking about the strategy now. I reckon they're swinging on a safety car. They, ideally, they'll be swinging on a safety car. Currently sitting in second in the number 20 local search entry of Hargraves and Gilson. We'll have to wait. It's still going on in the background there. Hayden Jackson looks like alongside. God, didn't Jared Hughes do a great job in the opening stint of the race? And Jared Hughes did an outstanding job in the 81 car. So Jackson's now in the car. Jordan Cox, he will be one to watch. He's trailing some bodywork as well at the back of the floor. He's been in the wars and out of it and caught penalties. And we know he's got the speed. He will be spectacular. And he's up against Josh Haynes. So there's two of the young guns, two of the quickest guys out there in the midfield at the moment, running in about that eighth and ninth position, having taken their compulsory pit stop. And Cox has gone fast to slap with an 11-2. He is on a charge. Let's head down to the pits, though, with Steve. Uh, uh, Brooks is still leading, so uh, we're just holding out, holding our strategy. Uh, yeah, so um, I guess that we're in a bit of a good position with points coming into the race, so um, we don't need to go for the win. So I guess it was one of those strategies. We didn't expect everybody to come in. We thought some of the uh, 
the lead drivers may have stayed out with Brooksy. But, um, yeah, so I, I guess we sort of felt like track position was keeping us a bit safer. So although it's probably, got, probably gone against us a bit more than what we had planned on this one, um, but if he can run, we assume we'll get another safety car the way that uh, the heat and the, and the drivers are, are out there. So um, hopefully another safety car comes in whilst his window's open and uh, that works and puts us back in, into a safe spot. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're not racing for the win, we're racing for the weekend. So the smartest decision was to try and keep out of trouble, stay at the front, and therefore we're in control of our own destiny. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, holding track position is probably important for the leader. Uh, the Lee Stibbs car's been in again. It's got some overheating issues that had actually fallen off, and so they've cleared the radiator a couple of times. And we did notice actually a little bit of patch of oil under the number four Mark Cruncher car with Jordan Cox. So hopefully we'll just keep an eye on those guys for the remainder of the race. Back to you, Matty. Well, it might not be Tyler Everingham, though, who's putting it back in, but uh, it is his teammate Jackson Rice now putting the pressure on Jordan Cox, and there is no love lost between these teams here this weekend. They just swapped some colours across the doors, so, yeah, lo lo love and fear and war. Now, Dylan was just talking about needing another safety car. They've got three laps to do their compulsory pit stop. If they do, if they do it under green, it's going to hurt them. It is seriously going to hurt them. Well, Jordan Cox is just coming down the inside now of Jackson Rice, so they are going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in this fight as they battle it out as Cox gets the wheel out on the dirt. It's going to be a fight for seventh position. Josh Haynes in front, who was our PWR Pole Award winner this weekend, and he is now right on the back of the 51 car, Graham Chenney, who's uh, probably changed out. This 51's gone through the pit stop now. And yeah, to be eating Thorne Burrow in the car. We, uh, unfortunately, we got told it was uh, was Steve probably starting the 11, so apologies to the boys there. It was uh, it was Michael in the car, so... All right, let's calm things down, but let's go back to that compulsory pit stop window closing inside of three laps, and if the leader oh, no. hasn't done it... Oh, there's contact, and away goes Stibbs into the tyre wall. He goes... I don't know if there was actual contact made. They're just was that trick? That was triggered off in that sort of eighth, ninth, tenth area. But Stibbs was actually down a lap, having pitted earlier on. And boy, hasn't it gone wrong for the championship leader at the beginning of this weekend at the Arrow Financial number 66 Camaro. Coming into this round as a solo driver, choosing not to have a co-driver for these long stints in the endurance, yes. And I'm not quite sure of contact made there with Josh Haynes, who's on the inside. Sips may have just gave him a little bit of room, dropped a wheel out on the dirt, which might have brought him unstuck at that point. So hopefully that won't, won't hurt Haynes. That's the biggest thing here for them. They need to try and fight their way back to Haynes Bates combination in fifth position at the moment. Down there, and the bonnet is off. He's out of the car there, and our crew are on site. Obviously, the Hugh McAllister car, unfortunately, finished the race a fair bit earlier after coming off down the end in turn number one. That car's got an issue, but Teb's car is smoking down there at the end of the main straight. It's on the inside in the drag strip area, so it's off the main racing line, and it's behind a wall, so it's in a safe position. To walk back through. You can see, grabbing the fire extinguisher there as the smoke continues to come out of that car, something just smouldering away in the background. What we've seen with the cars going on track with the material getting up underneath the cars with the exhaust systems and the brakes, it's actually under that car that's been get, catching there, having the fire issues. So I, I think the safety car call was made because of the fire risk and maybe having to get one of the fire rescue vehicles down there potentially to stop uh, any further damage with that car. So they're still working at it as uh, Aaron's actually just dug a whole heap of grass out of the right uh, front brake intake on that car. Look how much grass is down in front of the car. I think you're right there because when they've had the wheels off in previous races, it's right behind the wheel arch. There's a big gap in there. The grass comes up, gets stuck in there. If it's got some temperature off the exhaust well, or something you talk else about in there, it, well, brake, it's going to smother Brake road to temperature on application is probably in that 800 to 900 degree range. Well, check out the high-tech oils replay, and here it is. Aaron Tebb takes himself across the grass, and that'll th be through the back section there, through turns 10 and 11, slides the car around, and just collecting all that grass on the way through. You can see it coming off the front splitter of the car. Unfortunate for him, and I hope he misses the orange high sign. He does as he goes through. Um, manages to keep it off all that, and that's why we saw him go back down the drag strip. He's tried to keep all that grass off the racing line as well, but every time we see them take an excursion off the track they're coming into pit lane having to remove that grass because of the temperature reasons how's your maths all right all right so currently the thomas brook number 68 mustang who was leading the points for the north top of the, the king of the north title is in 12th position your race leader is uh that'll be the four of jordan cox in the car as we're on the final four laps 
of this endurance race to see who's going to be king of the north. Leading us at the moment, of course, is Jordan Cox in the Crusher Developments, number four. He's not going to be able to do enough, I think, to clinch that big $20,000 purse for the win this weekend. Josh Haynes behind him, but it's all eyes on the number 12 with Dylan Thomas and Tim Brook. Thomas now back in the car, and we believe if he can hold that position, he may become the king. He may get the crown. They've got a 22-point gap at the moment to the seven car. The seven car with Jackson Rice at the wheel is currently in the fifth position. All right, so 318 at the moment plays 296. The 68 car has it covered right now. They can't afford to go backwards. And even if the Rice Everingham 7 got to the front in the next three laps as we're about to complete lap number 32, I don't think it'll be enough for them unless the 68 car slides back. And you wouldn't think so based on the pace that we've seen over the weekend. So obviously their strategy, they've had the calculus, they've worked out what they were going to lose doing that stop on the green and who was closest to them in the points. Well, Rice has just dropped back into eighth position as well. well. We've seen him the... going back and now you can see Dylan Thomas has actually made the pass on him. So... He is dropping back through the field. Some issues there with the number seven Rice Everingham car. I'm not quite sure what's happened. We'll have to try and figure that out. So much action going on track at the moment. Of course, the IES number 51 entry up on our screens. Third position at the moment. And Thornborough driving that car is the second driver in the stint. And he's been super fast. The young fella, uh, obviously from the Toyota 86s and other things like that. So we'll wait and see if he can make a move on Josh Haynes. I don't think he's quite close enough at this point of the race. But there's still a few laps left to go. But we need to find out what happened to the number seven car because they've it looks gone, like they've gone from Dylan Thomas. Thomas might lost, be right. They've definitely lost some spots in that last lap. So your top three, Jordan Cox. It is the Haynes Bates, 37 and second. The Cheney Thornborough, 51 and third. Followed by Hume and Hackwood. How's that for a result of this final race? Boy, they've had some dramas as well this weekend. They're currently in fourth. Gardner Bideau in the fifth position. They were running second before that pit stop cycle on the safety car. So they've lost a little bit of time as well. Oh, no, that's right. Thomas is down a lap. He is actually down a lap in 12th position. So although he's making a lot of pay, a lot of places out there, he has to regain that lap. So yep. he has not got, got past the still in Rice the 12th position. Him. That's the thing they need to worry about. And he's only four spots behind the uh, number seven anyway. So it is points advantage to the number 68 CXC Mustang. They obviously knew what they were doing. They've had the calculators like we've had them out here in the commentary box, and my brain's frying because <laughs> it's hot and I can't do maths. Great to have Ethan Thornborough joining us here for this endurance race. As we saw, a lot of the drivers didn't team up with main game drivers. Only Josh Haynes and Nicholas Bates have decided to go with an outside entry, and he's done a fantastic job for Ethan Thornborough and Hayden Hume in the background. What a race from them today. Hopefully they can bring that home. Just a couple of laps left to go in this race as they come round and complete another lap. Jordan Cox, look at him in the number four. It's battered, it's scarred, it's got race tape holding it together, but it's in the lead, and we're on the final lap here for the challenge for the King of the North, TA2 Muscle Cars, brought to you by High Tech Steel Framing. Jordan Cox will be looking for the win for the race, but it's not going to be enough for the top of the King of the North title with the TA2 Muscle Car Series framed by High Tech. The 68 car back in the 12th position is in the box seat to take the overall win for every race calculated over the weekend on points. And they really have been dominant. Can you say consistently dominant or dominantly consistent? Yeah, they came out of round number one, two there in third position in the championship two. Not quite getting wins, but just being in the top five every race. So a great little combination of the CXC Mustangs. So we'll see if we're gonna crown them king of the north. Jordan Cox coming around. He's halfway through his final lap. He's just got to get through these few corners. Josh Haynes, what a fight back from them. Teamed up with Nicholas Bates this weekend. And Graham Cheney and Ed Thornborough, too, in third position at the moment. They're still going to be happy about winning 35 laps to have to come out here. The cars are all scarred up. Oh, no. Zach LaSharpo and the number 21 Tempest Solutions car has stopped. But our winner crossing the finish line, Jordan Cox and Mark Crutcher and the Crutcher Developments Mustang will get the 35 lap. Endurance race win here this afternoon at the High Tech Oil Super Series. Josh Haynes in second, Eden Thornborough in third. We are waiting for the CXC number 68 to come across the line. They were in 12th at the start of the previous lap. It should be enough for them to win the overall King of the North title by our calculations. I think they'll be pretty comfortable with it. Some big drives through the field. 
Hume and Hackwood in the 45 Challenger. Congratulations to them with a four place finish. That is an outstanding result considering uh, they were off track earlier on in the weekend as well. But boy, we're talking about drama and what's going on here for a, a world first for TA2 with driver changes and things like that. That was, that was a pretty decent motor race. Oh, it was fantastic to watch and of course to see these young racers. Jordan Cox coming out of TCR. He's well known for his front wheel drive racing, but hasn't he really impressed in the TO2 Massacre? We'd love to see him join the series in one of these. Mark Crutcher giving him a opportunity to join the team. And look, he's going to do the celebration burnout down the back there in front of the crowd here at Hidden Valley Raceway. What a round two of the TO2 muscle cars framed by high tech steel framing. And here we're going back to Victory Lane, I'm sure, to get this one. I know he may not be the king of the north this weekend, but you've got to take a victory when you get it. The TO2 Muscle Car results from the final race here at Hidden Valley Raceway. Crutcher and Cox will take the win with Haynes and Bates in second, Jenny and Thornborough in third, and then we round them out. It's got Hearn Manuel, Gardner Vidot, Hume Hackwood, McKeldon Zukanovic, Rice Everingham, Leonard Wright, and of course Michael Rowell there uh, showing up in 10th position in the number 15 car. Andrew Fisher in the 11th spot ahead of the Thomas Brooks 68, and that should be your TA2 King of the North winners. And uh, the 20 of Hargraves and Jellison in 13th, completing the top 15. Zach Lachalpo, although, uh, had an off there on that last lap. So, what a race. And we think it is going to be the number 68 Mustang taking the TA2 King of the North. 321, there's confirmation there on the screen from the Rice Everingham car on 288. The Hearn Manual Challenger on 286, tied with the Cheney Thornborough Challenger for 286. We've got a tie for third. Back to Gartner and Vitto, Haynes and Bates in sixth, Leonard and Wright in seventh, followed by Crutcher and Cox, Formosa Filipino, and Jackson and Hughes overall for the inaugural TA2 King of the North, part of the High Tech Oils Super Series here at Hidden Valley. Crossing down to Steve on pit lane. Jordan, <laughs> fantastic effort, and what a weekend. Yeah, crazy up here. What, what a phenomenal track, Darwin. Darwin's got a fantastic facility here in Hidden Valley, so yeah, super happy to be here. The Trans Am's put on a, uh, a great show, I think, here, so. Yeah, so the TA2 cars, obviously everything that's come in has got a touch or a rub. Obviously a busy race, and obviously kept you and Mark busy during the whole race. Absolutely, mate, yeah, it's, it's like that. I think that's the spirit of TA2 racing. It's just hard, hardcore stuff, so uh, I love it. Yeah, can't wait, can't wait to be back if, uh, if you'll have me. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. Well, what a fantastic weekend it's been here at uh, Hidden Valley Raceway. Uh, we've had heat, we've had dramas, we've had accidents. It's, it's all been on. All right, we're going to throw it down to Matt Kavanagh down on pit lane with our winners for the TA2 King of the North. Third place today, the number 51, Graham Cheney, Eden Thornbury. Well done. Congratulations. Well done, mate. Thank you. I'm going to give this to you both. It's a didgeridoo made in the Northern Territory. All right. Third place in today's race. Thanks, so. Very quickly, we need to go to our second place. Kate Warden, the NT Minister for Sport. Our runner-up, Jackson Rice and Tyler Everingham. We'll give you your award, guys. Well done. Thank you. Can take the didgeridoo. And our winner... For the King of the North, a $20,000 prize money here for High Tech Oils, round number two in the TO2 Muscle Cars, presented by George Gambino. Come forward, $20,000. Dylan Thomas and Tim Brook. Congratulations, mate. Give them the didgeridoo. Well done, gents. Fantastic race. Gary Dempsey from the NAMPS. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's been it from Hidden Valley Raceway here, round two of the High Tech Oil Super Series. We'll catch you for round number three from Queensland Raceway, the 2nd to the 4th of June. you got to come to Sydney to get drinks.